Okay. Uh, is this coming through? Yep. Okay. Um, so, <clears throat> so I'm working on uh, uh, Enzo E and Cello, and this is uh, shows some of the types of um, problems that astrophysicists are interested in. Uh, this is uh, these are visualizations of uh, simulations by Enzo, which is the parent application of Enzo E. And we can see that there's a very wide variety and um, different um, physics uh, being more prominent in some than others. And these uh, range over a very wide uh, range of scales. From the, in the center, we have you know, binary stars, which are modeled at uh, the box size is about uh, microparsec um, up through uh, the first stars, early galaxies, galaxy formation, and up to cosmological structure formation, where you have box sizes almost you know, a billion mega, uh, a billion parsecs. So it's a very wide range of scales. So we begin with um, the physics equations. Gravity is dominant. Um, usually, uh, we also have hydrodynamics for modeling the gas, uh, chemistry and associated cooling, uh, magnetohydrodynamics, um, and cosmological expansion. Now, these are solved by uh, multiple uh, numerical methods. And this forms the uh, Enzo E layer. We have the linear solvers for uh, solving the gravity of the Poisson equation. Uh, we have a modified uh, piecewise parabolic method for hydrodynamics. Uh, Grackle library written by uh, Britton Smith for uh, chemistry and cooling. And uh, we recently have uh, BLCT uh, an HD method implemented by uh, Matthew Abruzzo. Uh, the data structures are Next, this is the cello layer, and we use adaptive mesh refinement. This is because of the wide range of uh, scales, uh, not just between problems, but within a, within a given problem. We want to be able to concentrate the uh, computation where uh, it's needed and not where it isn't. We use an uh, array of octree type uh, adapt adaptive mesh refinement. Uh, and the data we include both Eulerian field regular arrays of uh, field data and Lagrangian particles. Uh, this is built on top of uh, Charm++, the parallel runtime system, which we all know. So if we look at a, uh, say a, a cosmological simulation, which is the uh, problem that we've been looking at uh, recently, is we have this adaptive mesh which of arrays of octrees. And each, no, each node in the octree um, is a block. And each block contains this uh, field data and uh, particle data. And this is uh, implemented as a char array. So each block is a char. Uh, dark matter, uh, which is a predominant a source of the gravity in cosmological simulations is modeled using collisionless particles and a cloud and cell method particle. It's a particle mesh method where you deposit the mass of the particles into a density field and then solve for the potential. Uh, we also want to include baryonic matter, which is just usual matter that we're used to. Um, this is modeled using field uh, variables, density, velocities, accelerations, and so on. And this is, again, with uh, modified PPM hydrodynamics. And we uh, add a flux correction step, which I'll talk about later. So there is, of course, communication involved uh, between blocks. It's typically nearest neighbors. Uh, for field data, we want to, we, each block contains a uh, keeps a halo or uh, ghost cells around the block of data that's assigned to the block. And these overlap the neighboring blocks. 
And so we have to periodically do a refresh operation where the data from where you send, uh, the block sends its face data to its neighbors and then waits for the um, incoming face data from its neighbors. And it just counts the number of messages received. And when it gets the last one, then it triggers uh, the next computation. Um, and particles are um, also uh, need to be communicated. The particles are assigned to the block based on the position. If it's inside a block, and then it's assigned to the block. But these particles are moving around. And they might leave um, the block. You have to uh, periodically uh, send the migrated particles to the neighboring blocks uh, and receive, um, gather the particles from the neighboring blocks that are move into uh, the, the, um, the center block. So uh, I'm going to go through a number of issues that I've been working on for the uh, past year or two. Uh, the main one was uh, scalable gravity. So we've had a uh, number of uh, linear solvers previously, including Krylov subspace methods, including the conjugate gradient method and by CG stab. These are, these are relatively easy to implement, just involve basic linear algebra and uh, matrix vector products that can vector updates. Um, but they're um, their, their algorithmic scalability is not, is, can be improved on. Uh, you can use preconditioning, however, to improve that. And communication can be intensive because uh, if you do dot products at each iteration and you can take you know, hundreds or thousands of iterations, so you're doing a lot of uh, global um, reductions. Uh, we also have a multi-grid method of just a basic V cycle. It's a little harder to implement because it involves different types of co uh, communication and synchronization between uh, blocks and parent blocks and child blocks. So not just the leaf nodes. Now this has better algorithmic scalability, um, but it, it's as our current implementation is only limited to uniform meshes. Uh, so our approach to finding a uh, scalable gravity, implementing a scalable gravity solver is to use uh, these available methods in uh, some way. Uh, we tried two uh, approaches, HG algorithm developed by Dan Reynolds, which used uh, the multi-grid V-cycle to precondition by CG stab. Uh, and a domain decomposition method, which is our current solver of choice. So I just want to go over the DD solver. So it's a, uh, we begin with a root solve. So this is a solve of the, even though it's an AMR mesh, we're just solving the problem on the root grid. And we've uh, tested this on uh, fairly large problems up to uh, 2048 cubed on uh, 131,000 processors of uh, blue waters with pretty good scaling. It, tend to, it turned up a bit at the end, but uh, uh, for the AMR part, we, uh, for the uh, domain decomposition part, we used by CG stab, um, but restricted to subdomains. So when the subdomains are defined by the root level blocks. So it's the array of octrees. So it, this is the array of octrees. And we have a separate CG by CG stab solver going inside of each subdomain. And so there's no communication between these blocks. But there might be within blocks in a tree if they happen to lie on uh, different processors. And finally, we do a uh, a smoothing operation. So with domain decomposition methods, you can get uh, discontinuities and uh, uh, accelerations at the domain boundaries. So this is just an attempt to uh, kind of smooth these discontinuities to improve the accuracy. And we already had the uh, Jacobi solver available from 
of the imp implementation of the multi-bit. So this uh, DD solver, we didn't have to write any new solvers just to combine uh, the ones that we had. Uh, this is just a visualization from our favorite performance tool projections uh, of a single cycle of the cosmology simulation. This is dark matter only using uh, this domain decomposition solver. Uh, um, most of this, most of the time in the cycle is spent in uh, the linear solver. Uh, so be, begin with uh, global induction to find the stopping criteria. And we will at some point do adaptive time stepping. So this will not be, um, uh, we can, won't be a global operation. And we do the adapt phase where we typically for cosmologies adapt to uh, density. So we have more highly refined blocks at denser regions. Uh, we do refresh uh, ghost zones after the adapt, uh, deposit the mass from the uh, dark matter particles onto the density fields and the, to get a total density of a field of both dark matter and baryonic matter. And then we begin the gravity solve. So we have, for the DD solver, we have these three uh, steps. We have the multi-grid base uh, root grid solve here. So we see we have two multi-grid V cycles and they go down to coarser and coarser grids until we get to a single block solving the um, a root grid equation prolonged back to the top. Do two cycles of that and then run the by CG stab independent tree solves. And when they are finished, we do a smoothing the last step to smooth the discontinuities across the domain uh, boundaries. And then compute accelerations and move particles. So this is um, what uh, just a basic uh, uh, cosmology simulation cycle. So in implementing the DD solver, uh, we uncovered some communication issues with the refresh due to, uh, because we were uh, a lot of different types of um, refresh uh, um, patterns going on, sometimes um, getting in each other's way. So I uh, mentioned this earlier, we, the way we used to you refresh as you send data when it's available. And then when it's received, you copy into your ghost zones. But the problem is if you have lots of different types of refreshes going on, you might not, block might be in some other step and then some incoming data um, from some other refresh comes in. So it might not be ready for it. So to correct that, to make it work or before I just added more synchronization, but that kind of defeats the whole purpose of using Charm++ to begin with. So uh, I address this by just adding a, a buffering layer. So now if uh, the blocks still send data when it's available uh, to the neighbors, if when, you, when a block receives data, if it's not ready yet, then it, cop it saves it in a buffer when block becomes ready, it copies uh, the buffered, any buffered data into the ghost zones. And after that, it's, we know it's ready. So it, uh, it continues in the same way as before, it copies it uh, directly into the ghost zones. Uh, so we have um, a problem we're looking at is cosmology with dark matter and uh, gas dynamics. So we, we have our scalable uh, linear solver. We tried running this problem and oops, and uh, we found that we can run dark matter only AMR simulations fine. Uh, we can run unigrid, you know, no AMR um, simulations with dark matter and gas. But when we combined uh, dark matter and gas with AMR, it led to the problem blowing up eventually. 
and this is kind of what it looks like. So this is internal energy. Uh, and you notice this was always, seemed to always be at refinement level boundaries. So boundaries between blocks in different levels. So first thought was maybe this is because we weren't doing flux correction. Uh, so uh, flux correction is um, due to uh, flux, uh, uh, fluxes between fine grids and coarse grids not uh, being uh, not matching each other. So we end up with um, fields that should be conserved, such as mass, um, uh, not being conserved due to these uh, uh, conflicting fluxes between the fine grid and uh, coarse grid. So uh, what's typically done is in AMR codes is a flux correction step where you, the fine grid sends its fluxes to the neighboring coarse grid. The coarse grid uh, does a differencing of the fluxes uh, and updates the uh, adjacent coarse cells uh, to, uh, um, to uh, take care of that difference. So it's basically the coarse grid uses the fine grid fluxes. So we tried, we fixed that. That took a while to implement, um, but it didn't actually fix the problem. So uh, we had to figure out what else it could be. We had a pretty good idea though. So it was always at block interface boundaries and we only had available uh, a fairly basic interpolation scheme, this trilinear interpolation. And so this was our main suspect. Uh, so, but we wanted to try a few things. And uh, we also have injection, which is even less accurate, uh, but it does, it is monotonic. So we, um, so it actually ran further than the linear interpolation, but we see these uh, grid effects due to it being basically zero order of accuracy at level boundaries. Uh, we thought it might be due to a time centering um, issue. Uh, we solved the gravity at uh, half between two time steps. And there's a known bug uh, in the adapt phase. So I just tried uh, using the lag uh, value, uh, which I knew was consistent, though maybe not accurate, and that, but that didn't fix it. And also tried reduced order uh, operators. The default is fourth order Laplacian and fourth order acceleration differencing. And that actually did help, but uh, up to a point, it's still, uh, we still ended up with the um, crashing. So <laughs> lately I've been uh, concentrating on implementing the in interpolation scheme that is in ENZO. So we know that works. We've done these uh, types of problems using ENZO. So the current linear interpolation in ENZO E uh, is just involves these uh, blue coarse grid zones that you want to uh, um, get values for the green ghost zone somehow. So to do that, you have to extrapolate. Uh, for some, at least some, if in this case, all of the cells, which leads to mo non monotonicity. And so you can end up with negative densities, for example, which is exactly the sort of uh, thing that would cause the crashes that we've been seeing. So we're pretty sure that this is the issue. Uh, Enzo's <coughs> uh, interpolation scheme, which is called second order A, uh, uses uh, an extra layer of coarse cells around uh, the fine grid ghost zones that you're interpolating to. And so we don't do any uh, extrapolation, it's all interpolation. So it's, we know it's, um, you can show it's monotonic, it's um, second order accurate and it's conservative. But it does involve some additional communication because this over this region overlaps extra blocks other than the two in question. 
So we have to uh, deal with that somehow. So here we have a uh, block I, it wants to send its data to block J to fill in block, uh, J's ghost cells. And you have this extra uh, padding of coarse cells around this the, um, the ghost cells. And this overlaps some uh, set of blocks BK. And this is a representative one. So the problem is that BK needs to know that it's participating in this communication defined by block, a pair of block I and J. So after thinking about this a bit, uh, I realized there's uh, um, enough symmetry in the problem that uh, we can deal with this uh, directly. So we, if we assume that the tree is fully balanced, meaning the, there's no level jump more than um, a factor of two across any face, including edges and corners, then we know that the block K must be in the same uh, mesh refinement level as block I or block J. And the top, it's in the same level as I, and the bottom, it's in the same level as J. And in either case, the um, um, we have this uh, dual prop, dual communication where in the top you have BK will at some point be sending its data to BJ for its ghost cells, and the BI will be participating in that. And in the bottom, the same idea. So we can use this uh, symmetry to for to answer the question of um, BK knowing when it needs to participate in the communication. Uh, I also added, so the indexing of this got uh, pretty complicated. So I just added a box uh, class to help with uh, computing the indices. I don't want to go into this in too much uh, detail. Um, you just define the neighboring block and its characteristics, and you get the region in question. And then you can, the neighboring blocks can quickly uh, determine whether they intersect that region or not and need to communicate, but participate in the communication. So uh, conclusion, we're finishing up the last steps, hopefully before we can uh, run real problems. We have uh, scalable gravity finished, uh, uh, buffered refresh and flux correction, and I'm currently finishing up the uh, this ENSO interpolation. Um, after this, we just have a couple remaining loose ends, uh, scalable I.O. We currently have HDF5 I.O., which works sometimes, usually. Uh, it's a bit flaky and it doesn't scale well. Um, so uh, that's, that'll be what I'll work on next. And we also had um, some questions about the scalability of Charm++'s plus plus checkpoint restart, but recently we heard that uh, Ronak is implemented as something that we'll, um, we're looking forward to checking out that will um, address that issue. And lastly, uh, we've uh, one of Mike's Mike Norman's grad students, uh, uh, Will Hicks, has noticed that the performance of Enzo E, when run on the same problem as Enzo, was much slower. Now this is a concern because the whole purpose of Enzo E is to be faster and more scalable. Um, so we're looking into that. Uh, I think it can be several, uh, one of um, probably uh, several contributing issues. Uh, Enzo E tends to over refine relative to Enzo just due to its AMR um, type that's octree instead of structured AMR, even using the same refinement uh, criteria. Uh, refresh operations by default are across edges and corners, as well as facets, which Enzo um, only uses. Uh, there's um, typically less communication in Enzo's gravity solver, and Enzo uses adaptive time stepping, which we haven't implemented in Enzo E yet. Um, and that's what I have. Thank you. 
Thanks, James. Um, I don't see any questions in the chat or the Google Doc, but I'll give people a, a minute. Okay. Uh, I have a question. Yep, go ahead. Okay. Uh, so, so you're mentioning scalable I.O. This is something that um, we're also interested in. And currently, we're also using HDF5 and, and all of the fun pains and struggles that are associated with mm -hmm. that. Um, so, so what we're doing is we're basically writing currently one, so if we're writing volume data, we're writing one file per node, mm -hmm. and then we're writing all of the data contiguously from, so we're using DG and we write all the data contiguously and we've found this of course helps, but you know, it's unclear how well this will work. It, it, there's obviously not perfect either. Um, and so I was wondering what, if you've thought about what your plans are, or if there are people from other codes here, what they're doing for uh, dealing with IO and Charm++. Plus the other thing is, you know, one file per node works until you get to tens of thousands per 10,000 10, nodes or so, and then the sysadmins start becoming unhappy with you. So. Yeah, <laughs> I've encountered that. Um, yeah, currently Enzo E does one file per process, which certainly doesn't scale. Um, our initial implementation will will be you know one uh, file per node have one writer per node and that will at least be uh, an improvement on what we have now um, we're also considering uh, using an mpi library um, so it's charm plus plus can interact with um, and mpi can run in the same application and there are mpi libraries available so um, we're planning on at least investigating that as a possible option. Right, I guess something like the, the because HDF5 I think has parallel IO. I have no idea how well that works. Mm -hmm. I think that's MPI right. based. So, yeah. so is that one of the things you're thinking yeah, of? Or, or, we, okay. Yeah, I've only used the serial part of uh, HDF5 so far, but yeah, using the, HD, the um, parallel. HDF5. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, thank you, James. I don't see any other uh, questions. Oh, I have a quick question. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, so uh, is uh, I remember there was at some point some talk. Um, I think this was I overheard it. Enzo E discussion uh, of implementing the fast multiple method for gravity solve Had, is that uh, is that happening or um, um, that's that's in the plans uh, we hope okay. to get to um, to try that uh, yeah the uh, current our DD solver is um, it's okay uh, I think there is certainly room for improvement um, both in the performance and the accuracy 